Hi, uh, welcome to the Derek Show. Anyways, uh, thanks for coming, and I'm now going to talk a little bit about printing using a pet cheese, my favorite filament. Um, okay, the first thing you do whenever switching filaments, what I always do is to print a temperature tower. And when, when I did, I discovered that the best temperature for printing pet cheese is 220 degrees Celsius for the nozzle, and 80 degrees, um, 80 degrees Celsius for the printing bed. Okay, so now that I'm happy with my temperature, the first, the next test I wanted to do was the retraction distance test. I picked this one because I have an all metal hot end, so there's a maximum that they recommend that I can have a retraction distance of five millimeters. So when printing this uh, tower, this uh, distance tower, I set the speed to 45 millimeters per second, and I found that the best retraction distance was around three millimeters. retraction test, so you'll, you can see that pet cheese is a very stringy filament. Right? It's very difficult to get it not string like a perfect hood. The next thing I did was print a retract tower to determine and calculate my retraction speed. So as you see, I took a video of how I set up in the slicer. I used the calibration parts extension for Ultimaker Cura, and I recommend you all get that. And um, as you can see, you have to add a post-processing script, too, at the end. But what I found out was that 45 millimeters per second seemed to be a very good speed to begin with. Ends up, I gave up on this. Uh, with crop test. So what I did was I contacted uh, Michael Swift support and they gave me a list of settings to use, which is very nice. Of I'll put it in my uh, comments in the video. So um, the next thing I did was print a Nimitz Benchy. Uh, it's my favorite Benchy. Everyone has to say this, but Benchies are great for seeing problems when you're printing overhangs and arches. By just for experiment's sake, print the torture test. So as you can see, it just botchered it, but I think that's more because of catchy springing than anything else. going to try printing um, a 1 6 scale K9 uh, from Doctor Who, a uh, pet sheet, to see if there's going to be any uh, warping issues or anything like I experienced when I tried to print it out of ABS. Look at this video here. You can see uh, my, how I type in the way of my axes when they're printing. Sometimes when the axes are moving, the cables get caught in front and then kind of put pressure on the axes in and they sometimes they jump and then they cause printing problems. So I tied it up this way. The thing I found when printing with Petchy is I had to have a plan on how to align my things on the printer bed. So as you can see from the first, when I had the, the project printer standing up with the port, it didn't print well. 
but when I printed lying flat with supports underneath it, then it got a lot better result. Now, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about one of the newbie mistakes I made. As you can see here, the filament is curled this way because I left the filament out in the air for too long, and so it absorbed moisture and became brittle and broke while the extruder was pushing it through the Bowden tube. And the, the way uh, to get around this is first I had to cut it out, then I removed my uh, Bowden tube from the extruder point, but not at the hot end point. And basically, I used pliers and I managed to grab a bit of the end of the of the film they'll fill there and slowly pull it out right so the way to avoid this what happens always when you're done and you know you're not going to print for a while take your filament out of the printer roll in the quill put it in a sealed like plastic box and put some silica gel pack in it to absorb any moisture I like to do that is cleaning the hot end, the nozzle itself, every once in a while. So I bought a cleaning tool. That I basically go in and I just push down through the top of the the heat sink, right, through into the nozzle, and I push the hot filament out from the bottom, right. Obviously, I I heat up the nozzle beforehand. Now, why I say it's controversial is because I have to put, undo the top uh, screw the top part, right, to take the Bowden tube out, so I can put the cleaning tool in. So every time I pop the Bowden tube out of that, uh, um, what do you call it, that um, locking mechanism, I weaken the lock, right? Well, that's the trade-off. So I recommend doing it once in a while, but not too often. Show you this. Um, I want to show you this uh, Petchy uh, one-six scale uh, throne that I printed for my daughter to play with. As you can see, there's springing on it, and at the the bottom of the throne, which I printed with support, you can see some of the support stuck on to the, the to the chair leg, and it just looks not that clean. But the quality isn't bad. So now uh, I want to show you uh, the settings I did and how what happened when I printed a knock. This knock is uh, basically from the movie Frozen 2. It's to one six scale so that my daughter can put her Elsa doll on it and ride it, to have the Elsa doll ride it. As you can see, I position on the bed plate in order so that a minimal amount of supports, but and also the supports in a way that they don't wreck the quality of the print.
Okay, so um, one of the things I want to talk about also is um, what to do with the model after you print them. As you can see from this video here, this knock I printed like, for my daughter at one six scale so that my daughter could play with, the, play with it with her doll. I use support, the like tree supports and laugh, right? And so as you can see, I can pull the tree supports off pretty easily, right? Because the, the density is much smaller. So I like using tree supports. I find them a lot easier than the typical regular normal supports. So anyways, now, I want to take some time to talk about some of the things I learned about when uh, going through all this exercise here. The first and most important thing I learned about uh, printing in Petchy is you've got to do the bed leveling properly. But again, I think that counts for everybody. But I found it most sensitive with Petchy. So 
To do bed leveling properly, I heated my nozzle and printer to the right temperature settings first. I'll explain those later. The paper must slide easily between the hot nozzle and hot bed. So you don't have to push it through. You just, it, you just don't have to drag it through. You just push it. It should go under, but it should vibrate. Right? You should feel some vibration. If your pet G print isn't sticking to your glass bed, it's because your print bed is not level. Right? So it's, it's not adding glue or hairspray. As I said. It's mostly because the printing is not level. So when you saw me in the beginning using hairspray, that wasn't necessary. I just had to keep the bed level. I hadn't had it fully level yet. Okay, so now I want to talk a little about the splicer settings I use. So I found 
from experimentation, the best is to have the nozzle temperature set to 220 degrees Celsius and the bed print bed temperature to 80 degrees Celsius. So this way, the, it keeps the pet cheese stuck on the bed, but when uh, everything cools down, you can just basically pop your print off. Nozzle temperature, don't set it too high. I found this is better because then it, it comes out as liquidy and then it, it solidifies quicker, you have less stringing. Uh, print speed, I put slower is better. So 40 millimeters per second, uh, travel speed of 150 millimeters per second, and a first layer speed of uh, 5 millimeters per second. That's very important. You want low first layer speed so the print sticks. I was finding that if I have a complicated first layer, I was printing too fast, it, it would just get wrapped up around the nozzle and just come off the print bed. So it's useless. Uh, lastly, the retraction distance. I took three millimeters, as that was what the micro switch support recommended for me. And I set the retraction speed at five millimeters per second and do a Z hop when retracted. And that helped uh, reduce uh, the stringing a little bit. So now I'm going to talk about the things you always do before starting a print. And the most important is cleaning the bed. Okay, that is the absolute most important thing. So first what I do, and you watch here, I will soak a rag, like a cleaning rag, in water and just put it on the bed on top like that to let the bed, the, whatever's on the bed, to absorb some of the moisture. You mean, it just makes things a lot easier that way. you let the print bed soak for a few minutes and that a wet rag just wipe it off the wet rag that should get everything any glue mousse whatever and then dry it off you're done So, like I said before, cleaning the bed is the most important. Uh, putting glue on the bed isn't necessary. However, I say even before printing or selecting something to print, preheat both the nozzle and bed to your PETG levels before starting to print, as this lets some filament in the nozzle melt and ooze out. Uh, to make this easier, what I do is I add my uh, pet, I added my PETG uh, temperatures to my firmware, so it's a selection. It's one of the pre-selections <coughs> pre in the menu. So make sure that you know, the filament is oozing out of the nozzle a little, right, before you start printing. It should flow as a thread, especially, and this is especially important with uh, smaller diameter nozzles like 0.2 millimeters. Last, double check to ensure wiring isn't getting in the way of the print head motion. I had a lot of problems with that in the past. So, when the printing starts, watch the first layer to make sure everything goes straight. Okay, so if you look here, you can see the first layer, you can see any problems right away and stop it before it gets worse. And as always, make sure wiring isn't interfering with the motion of the printer head. Now, this can cause a jump and confuse the printer as to where the head is actually on the print bed 
And as you can see from this first layer here, it jumped, right? So I managed to intercept it and stop it before it got too far. So I will end this episode of The Derek Show with this one last pointer. As you can see here, sometimes filament doesn't count as the nozzle while it's printing. So you have to check back and you'll notice that, as I show later here, the filament got wrapped around itself in the spindle, uh, the spool, right? So I basically had to unwind the fi uh, the, all the filament in the spool so that it wouldn't get wrapped up like that again. Okay? So just keep that in mind and thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.